installation of wall-mounted oxygen points in Statarem and St. Barnabas Hospital is planned for commissioning this month. Mazigane, Kazulu, and Midlands Hospital are also under consideration. We have done this already in a number of our district hospitals. These actually bulk uh, oxygen tanks are, are already existing. The most critical resource to help COVID-19 patients when they are admitted in our health care facilities is our health care workers. They bear the most brand of COVID-19 in the front line every day. They work long hours and they have seen the worst that this virus can do to alleviate this pressure on them. We have appointed 310 clinical staff who have completed their community service. In addition, a further 625 professional nurses will complete their community service training in April and will be utilized uh, on the front lines. We have a challenge in the market of getting nurses, especially those who can uh, mend the uh, critical care beds uh, as well as the ICU beds. So we are working very hard uh, to really make sure that these issues are addressed. I've told the MSC and the HOD that uh, we must actually replace the permanent posts uh, of nurses uh, that are either retiring or are getting out of system for various reasons. We can't have that one delayed because we need nurses. And uh, part of the reason that we're struggling to get nurses, no one is prepared to leave a permanent job for a contract job. We welcome the announcement by the Minister of Health to bring forward vaccine procurement availability and the start of vaccination for healthcare workers as a priority, the elderly and vulnerable groups, as early as February. There are people who are recklessly spreading falsehoods about vaccine without any sh share of knowledge about vaccine, telling our people that they should not take a vaccine when it arrives. I think it is about time that our law enforcement looks into such people seriously because they pose a threat to the health of our people. Our people should trust government as the only credible authority on vaccine and the process that will be followed to roll it out. We will ensure that our staff are trained to achieve a rapid rollout of the vaccine. We will also work with all critical stakeholders to ensure the effective rollout of the vaccination program to stop the risk of a third wave and ease economic disruptions and social impact caused by the stringent regulations. We will henceforth set up a provincial coordinating committee as required by national for the vaccine rollout to advise us on technical, social and ethical issues related to mass vaccination of our communities. We want to assure the people of our province that our mandated interventions on vaccine and vaccination will be guided by science. We will follow ethical principles and we will ensure rapid implementation to achieve the required level of the herd immunity to prevent COVID-19 transmission and to achieve containment levels towards total elimination of the virus by the end of 2021. The restriction under alert level 3 meant the closure of the traditional circumcision season in our province. We agree with our traditional leaders that the December season is closed and what remains now is to bring home safe all the boys that have undergone the rite of passage to manhood. Our monitoring teams are hard at work with the traditional leaders to monitor all the boys that have undergone this process. When they come home, there will be no festivities because that could lead to new infections. Sichilo, by social gatherings, imikimbi, imikidi, jalonjalo, sinoloiko loko kuba zenga dalu sasa zeko la lencho longwane, kakulu, so siya bakela kabandu, sesi bakelele, savana, indo kuba ama kwengwe makasanjwe, abuye swa yalwe, Hector Selfanele Cleo Colandeliswe, Emikiti Abanduan, Ugozal Segisa, is Tete said. 
Our teams have uh, tested 4,878 initiates for COVID-19 and 239 returned positive. Result, returned uh, positive results and were placed under isolation measures. Sadly, we lost 11 initiates to a variety of uh, complications that are not associated with COVID-19. I am Kelegang and Oba Spenabandu and Oba Sueleka, who are dehydrated. Kutala Lendo C. Teta, Yokoba, Akukondi Tabanduana, Mabanga Nikwa Amans, Abanduana Bangogo, Abafani, Nabanduana, Banga Pambi. We are all subjected to Ukuja Ogulula, Kuala Maklesha, Abanduana Banga Pambi, Lesia Yazba, Imeko. As in Jebabe was of Melana Naz. So see at Ella in the Gogba in Libby Abanduana Bonuko Bolabo Babacona Banga Funuko Sella Mans, Gogno Guabo, Gengayo Wabe City Bafunuku Bamba, Isig, see at Elba Abanduana Banga Yens Lord, and the Katazega Kulu, Ape Vigini Club and the Andele, Ikaya Lagua Colela, Pae Dujua, Eluzum Dana Wallo, Obesenzo Grade Twelve, a rugby player. A rugby player, simply because the boy was dehydrated. Father has done everything. Father has been there. Father has been supporting the child. I really felt so bad. Uh, even the day that the boy passed on, father was there from 8 a.m. until 1,300 hours. But the boy, after four, was almost succumbing to this dehydration. Utadawake wa mnika kwa kwa kamanzi at some point, kukwe nsegi sindoko kwa kwa isifba, inga kinga manzi, umdani ya wafuma na manzi. Akitayelba, le mtu imbu wa manzi, si unyanzi lise, abandwa na bakwa zuku nikwa manzi, afanele kileyo, alingeneo kukwa abakwet. So that, singa bina abandwa na asibaluza yo. Nga yezo zindo ezinjalo. We pass our deepest condolences to all these families, these are deaths that should have not happened. These are deaths that should have been prevented. Nendo itetu kuti usem ninzi ondo nagele ekufneka si ulungi si ile singu kulumente kulomtimbi uluwaluku. Siba mbisene nengkosi naba zali babanduana abaya esutwini. Ditetanje kuko abakweta abanga mashumi amabini anesibini kwezi pedele zetu. Benge niswe zizi ndo Ekunga fanele kanga ukuba zenzeki ili ka esili kuba kakutle elisiko lola luku. Sia tela, sia ngola, sia kalima kwa kona abandu, abanga matota bonge. Mabai tanele into yoku sweleka kwa bakweta, nukusua kwa bakweta ezbele. Kanye kandi la mandoleke kuku kalimela into eti etendi. Ya bandu abomba, abandu abangwa chwe. Pagu social media, sitibana nezi ndo ngezi ndo ezi tetuwa ndo kukubabakona abandu, abomba, abandu abangwa chwe yo. E, nge meko, zenko lelo, nge nko lelo. Nge nga ye meko yoko kuba, sisazba, abandu abangwa chwe kakati kuinda wese suka kuzo. Bomba tiswe yi plastics. Pati panzu kwe meko, abandu abaswele gela kuyo, yesi sifo. Ukulumendu wabona kufanele gilu ba ukukusela, ukusasaze kakwese sifo. Ma kukwalase lulomtu yu. Telilege apesebe, ukukuba masito ngele kufushane le ngake. Sikangele indela esna ukawlela nangazo na bandu. Nezi kobo ez no se jenzi iswa. Ukukwe nsegi iswa la ando ibi no gwenzuwa yu plastiki. Ikona enye indo eno gwenzuwa ngayo. Konuguze kwa kukisikalwe bandu yu. So kukuba abandu kade ngwajwa ne plastiki. Baya buya. Be colors is no gazindo, Jago Gossesaz, a belle lenge basatet, a band bagutic, by a colloca cool glon, God was here by Ella, a band bagut, by as Bacucum teto, or Miss Elway or Exhumation. Kaufnu Gomba, whom to send my jig, Kukimi teto and a mecaco, a land of why. Ubagi corner lend us if I, Isas as why your park, my castle in the belly one. See at Ella, see a land, see at Ella, a band of bazing a pambilly. Kukoko kutaka niseka kwenye nzima halo si boni sana si tete na bakuingu yenza londo mabanga kali ukuyenza uba baada ya senzela 
enye i pandemic esinga ilinde langa yoku sasazeka kwezi fukuba sasaziba umtu nje noba ebengena coronavirus e, aku nwa itua lomtu e, u infectious kakul so siya tela keba abandu ba ilo nipelendo so siya ikalimela ke londo eba mahinge nzegi uba ikona indo ingati ifuna ukuyenza lastly uh, the marking of great 12 exams papers has started in our province the department of health has conducted testing in all marking centers since saturday when the chief and senior markers came to prepare venues for marking positive cases have been managed by the department of health and department of education has sent in replacement uh, markers uh, and all people are undergoing the same testing. We have uh, encouraged all markers to stay in the marking centers precinct for the entire period of marking so that no one may bring infection from outside. The Department of Education will be responsible for daily screening of symptoms and uh, providing a sick bay for positive screens to be taken over by Department of Health. As part of our precautional approach on the marking for grade 12, we've conducted screening and testing of all our markers. We've tested uh, 2,310 markers already at the, mar at, uh, at the marking centers in the province, and 79 people tested positive for COVID-19. All those who tested positive will receive psychosocial support from government have been isolated and will be kept in isolation until they recover. We wish them speedy recovery. Tracking and tracing of their contacts has started. We are hopeful that the class of 2020 will defy the odds that were stuck against them when COVID-19 hit our shores. They studied under very difficult circumstances, but with the support of their teachers, they will prevail. We want to send our heartfelt condolences to the former member of the provincial legislature who represented the Democratic Party and later Democratic Alliance, Mr. Eddie Trent, who passed on recently. We wish uh, his family strength and fortitude during this time of mourning. We thank him for the role he has played in the shaping of our multi-party democracy and building the province to be a better place through the work he did in the opposition benches of our provincial legislature. We welcome MECs that have been in isolation, MEC Gomba, Beck, MEC Fundile Gade, MEC for Education, MEC Spoga Zimani Lucid, MEC for Social Development, uh, who have since recovered from COVID-19. These MECs are fully back at work and are working remotely. We also send our heartfelt condolences to the Gomba family for the loss of MECs uh, Gomba mother. Umama wa kaibena 92 years. We are not together like Kwekwaza. We are not together like Kwekwaza. We are not we wish the family strength uh, during this morning period. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, Premier. We will now take questions from members of the media. Uh, let's start with those that are here and then those that are joining through Microsoft Teams can just raise their hands here or write in the chat box. Then we'll give you an opportunity to ask questions. Uh, we will not be able, unfortunately, we won't be able to have uh, time for one month with the premier, so we get to a chance to ask a question now. Uh, okay, we'll be there in the end. Let's go. Um, happy New Year to us all. Premier, even though there are, there's a 90% recovery rate, and the numbers slowly declining in the province, but the death toll remains a bit high compared to other provinces. What can you attribute to that? Therefore. Okay. You want to take that to me or let's take me on the first? No, yes, that was my question. Okay. That's the only 
Okay, let me check with JJ. Um, JJ, you can come in. JJ, can you hear me? Okay, let's see if you can hear if you can please uh, answer the well, uh, both uh, uh, Dr. Zungu and uh, Dr. Mbengashe, the special advisor next to me, uh, can give more uh, kind of a, a scientific analysis around that. But what we know, uh, uh, these have been uh, attributed to the challenge of comorbidities. Most people that were losing uh, are people who have uh, comorbidities. It's not just people that were losing so easy. But uh, as we indicated uh, the, in the last briefing that we have also asked our local universities, uh, particularly those that are also in the medical uh, science space, to help us dig deep. We need more empirical evidence around this so that uh, we don't just continue uh, making it as easy as that is an issue of comorbidities. But clearly, we have not lost people uh, who have no comorbidities. So we have seen how vicious this virus is in those people with the comorbidities. So that's a challenge that we have. And we knew the challenge of the health profile of our people. We've indicated that uh, upfront because we, everyone knew that there is no uh, cure, there is no medication for this. We can only deal with all these other issues. But also, uh, the challenge of our people staying at home longer. I know, especially in this second wave, many people preferred to isolate at home. Many people preferred to quarantine at home unlike what we tried to do in the first phase, where we were almost kind of forcing people for quarantine and isolation. So we still believe that there's a, some gaps there in terms of uh, discipline on individual. The issue of the social behavior uh, become, becomes uh, uh, clear. And we've been making this plea that we know that uh, as much as we're all susceptible to the virus, but older people are more vulnerable, are more risky, the more we allow them exposed to this, it's going to be a challenge. And many of them are not almost, are not loitering, are not all over. They are staying in their homes. But young people, um, we really want to appeal. We can't really continue uh, really observing this uh, juvenile de delinquence of some sort, this behavior. Uh, it, it, it has to stop. That our young people must understand that for them to remain with grandmothers and grandfathers, they must take responsibility. The unfortunate part, or fortunate part to them, this COVID-19 is not really doing damage that much to them, but we're already seeing signs of losing also young people, but still young people with comorbidities. So we really uh, very much concerned as a province around the numbers. Indeed, the numbers are really worrying us. They are growing. We've been on average of 100 and above for almost uh, two weeks now uh, observing that situation we are losing our people our people are dying the only way that we can do to stop our people not to die is to get everyone at home no one out no one loitering at least you, you do all these non-pharmaceutical uh, protocols stick to them be disciplined respect them you must know that uh, as uh, uh, as they say the more you move around the more you allow this virus uh, to be actually uh, in motion. Uh, the only way to fundamentally disrupt the transmission of this virus is to be disciplined, is to be at home, is to observe that. So we are really losing uh, older people, and this is another challenge. Many homes uh, will be soon uh, child-headed households because families have gone, uh, families have been perished. So we really want to plead, we really want to appeal uh, that let's take response, not only for a late level three, 14 days intervention, but let's actually internalize the issue of responsibility. Wherever you, know, you go, you must know that you might be uh, applying for decimation of your member of the family. The fact that you are out there and you want to satisfy your own interest as a young person. So we really want to appeal to young people to take responsibility. Uh, these are our future leaders. You start now. So we expect them to really uh, understand this call that we're making, that this country without them, uh, it won't actually 
have its future that is intended. So the issue of debt, it's a concerning, it, it's really up, we almost topping every province, and our people are dying. So we are really concerned. Many other people are dying at home. Yes, we've actually put in place a system of uh, taking swaps posthumously, that uh, even if someone has died at home, that must be done. That's what that health is doing to verify uh, all such kind of information, which is quite critical for us to understand. We're doing it also to protect uh, those who are still alive, so that you don't sit at home and say, this was not a COVID case, it was a natural death, you want to do a normal uh, funeral, uh, only to realize that you are risking everyone around. So that's why we are really making this plea that funerals must comply to the uh, regulations, manage them, keep them into uh, the kind of parameters that have been uh, set up because we're protecting these other people who are still alive. We don't want funerals that must have follow-ups uh, of trail of death simply because people attended. Elder people must be cautious about attending funerals. You can come back tomorrow, uh, even if that was a very close-set fam family, uh, you can let it go, uh, come back. So we're really pleading. We're really pleading. Was just fully compliant. Yongindo yenzwa kwa protocols and umnuabo ubuses lalin. Wa kutuwa kakuche yongindo yenzwa ngenge lefanelekle. So in seven zeswa no paga tuko kulment na bantu si ela nemkosi. Ebendenemitingenko <laughs> And Jango we also activated our, our operation mass partisan uh, service delivery model. So those uh, word based war rooms are meant to assist our people reach out, give all the necessary support that is required during this time. Traditional leaders, uh, civil society NGOs at that level working together. At a local level, our local command councils, at a district level, our district. A coronavirus Command Council working, all of them working together with the Provincial uh, Coronavirus Command Council. So we really pleading, we're getting that system in place and it has been working, we've seen it, and that's why we're able to extinguish fires easily where we see some outbreaks. I'm not sure, Doc, if you'd want to elaborate more on this issue uh, of uh, deaths. You can come here. Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, the Premier has covered quite substantially the issues of death. I'm just going to spend a little bit on the explanatory component of the science, why these things are happening. The key issue really is what is called the model of society, what contributes to the, the existing conditions within a society. One of the biggest challenges we have is that death in COVID have really been researched that they are related to age. The older you are, over 60, 65, the second one is the number of what is called the existing medical condition. If you have more than one, you've got more than three or more than four, your conditions are actually, you actually the likelihood of dying are quite high. And the last point is that um, there is always a challenge that all the numbers of people we know that have caught COVID today, there are lots of other people who never really were recorded in our system, and therefore we don't really know what they are. So what then that has is that when we calculate the number of deaths, we usually relate the number of deaths on the number of people that are known to have been having COVID, and the ratio of that can actually go up or go down depending on the number of people that are known. So in our situation, especially with this uh, recent COVID, is that we had a high number of young people who get infection 
over 80% of those individuals, they don't know they have an infection, they don't have symptoms. And those numbers are not visible in the counting. And when these people come home, then they transmit the infections to the elderly people that are there. And that this happens because they don't have symptoms, they don't know, and the elderly people have no suspicion that they have got problem. The second biggest problem that we find is that there is an unfortunate view that if you go to hospitals, then people die. And this is, a, this is not just on COVID. It's been a matter that has been in the older HIV and all that. So why people stay too long? And we have been measuring why we are saying that. If you die in a hospital within 72 hours, we now know that you took too long to come in. And those numbers are very growing that most of the people actually, that people usually say is someone died in a casualty, some di someone died while he's waiting for a doctor, is staying too long before you are actually there. We now know that if you come early, there's really a big development in terms of treatment. Oxygen makes a huge difference in terms of your survival if you're in your elderly. Secondly, if you start the steroids, which are dexamethasone, that makes a huge di difference in terms of survival. And the third issue, we've got what is called non-invasive ventilation about high oxygen. Those components actually deal well in trying to save lives. We are finding in our communities that there's a very late coming Therefore, there is no benefit in the treatment protocols, and they are not actually getting the benefit of surviving. So we are urging people that don't stay at home, because the issue about whether you are very sick or not, it's very difficult to discern while you are at home. There is, in, um, in, in science now, they know that some people who actually have got very critical oxygen levels in their bodies, they stay happy not knowing. And then when this critical level comes to a part where it, it has injuries in your heart, in the other system, and they suddenly collapse. So I think what Premier has raised is very important. The part of this science is also there. What the message is, come early if you are elderly, you've got diseases that you have, you are overweight, and you are unsure about where your condition is because you can really benefit in the new treatment. We think that makes a major contribution in the excess death in the province. I, I'm just going to speak on the issues of the vaccine. Uh, I know that uh, there was a question about vaccine and, uh, and, and Aspen and the Johnson & Johnson uh, 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 initiative. Uh, the Premier has made a statement already that he will be visiting Johnson & Johnson and Aspen uh, a, a factory in Port Elizabeth. This is an important one. What's important on the vaccine is that uh, most of the local uh, uh, companies like uh, Aspen have really invested a lot of money, about over three billion, to build what is called a, a sterile manufacturing system which is the requirement to produce good vaccine. Two, the filling of those little vials for vaccine. And three, the actual making sure that the distribution of the vaccine is happening. So Johnson & Johnson is doing the research and is doing the, 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 the clinical trials and is actually making a provision to, to, to make sure that there's a manufacturing. What we understand, we know that um, um, Aspen will probably be able, out of their investments, to get up to 300 million doses, which will be used in the country and also in other countries as well. This is important because the new way of developing vaccine, which people have really experienced, is that you no longer do what is called sequential development of vaccine. You develop the vaccine, it gets approved, and then you decide to manufacture. You carry those concurrently so that you can have a vaccine that is available much quicker. So we're very excited about the development of vaccine. We're very excited about the minister's announcement, which the Premier has made. And I just want to make a last point about the variant. I think there's been some media reports, and this came up from the British, uh, I think it was a, a Minister for Health, who actually made an announcement that the variant in South Africa could be much more virulent than the one that they have. There is no science that supports that. What we know now is that the two variants are very, uh, are very close to each other in terms of the, how they have developed. The second part is that we know that the variant that we have is actually much more easy to transmit, but it doesn't cause a severe disease. And they have actually tested the idea whether the vaccines that we have 
will actually be effective against this variant. The science as it stands right now, these vaccines will be equally uh, um, responsive onto this. We're quite lucky in the new ways how vaccine platforms have been developed because the scientists can actually, um, what is called, create a bespoke a virus, a, a vaccine, depending on what the virus gene system is. So if there's a genetic change in future on the variants, the change in the vaccine development will not take more than a few months to actually do that. But at the moment, there is no danger in actually doing that. I think I've answered the question. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thanks, Doc. There are additional questions. Uh, this one goes to the previous. Uh, from Kevin, uh, it says, the infrastructure up to standards for the rollout of COVID-19 COVID vaccine? Are draft plans being put in place so the province is uh, ready to the vaccine become available? That's the first question. This one for another question uh, that you want to ask. Yes, I wanted to ask um, the, the Premier, um, in terms of readiness, because we do know that as we're speaking about the vaccine, it also goes to you, Doc. There are so many skeptics out there when it comes to the effectiveness of the vaccine and how it's going to be rolled out. Is there a plan from the government of the Eastern Cape in terms of educating the people? Because when it comes to the skeptics or the so-called people against this vaccine, which if possibly the skeptics or those against this vaccine roll out, they may be effective in, 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 in posing or, ex or opposing this vaccine. In that mean, that would mean that a lot of people would die. But is there a plan of the province in the Eastern Cape that would help out to educate the people out there in the communities so that they understand the importance of this vaccine? Okay, thank you. Thanks, uh, uh, no, Premier Kapandamashe. After my question to Premier, Premier Eastern Cape is the only province that was uh, given green light for infection uh, uh, summer season. So my question is, why, why, why such a push? Because I believe, according to Dr. Ambassador Nagoma, Premier, you, as well as the leader of the traditional, um, South of traditional leaders, went to do the presentation uh, to state the case that Eastern Cape have to be uh, given a green light. My question is, why such a push? You know, and now we're to see from this dilemma where this whole thing has to be uh, stopped. And uh, my second question is, what if uh, the second wave prolongs uh, over winter uh, season? Will you have that to go back to uh, the national government to be given a green light again? You know? And uh, what are you saying on that? Thank you. Thank you very much. <coughs> uh, the Eastern Cape infrastructure uh, capacity. I think this is a question that we kept on uh, talking to uh, on the now rollout of uh, the, the, the vaccine. Uh, we are not dealing with the, this, uh, uh, the infectious diseases for the first time. There's been diseases like this before. We had TBs, we had all these, uh, and the government is always able to respond and rise to the occasion at that particular point. I repeat, no country in the world that was prepared for this because it was, it's unprecedented. It was never, it was unforeseen. But uh, the, what is important is agility of government. That's why national, that's why minister has outlined the process and also indicated to all provinces that you must begin now to prepare yourselves for this eventuality. So Eastern Cape, like any other provinces, is working on that and uh, we will be able to address that. At a time when our people will be vaccinated, Eastern Cape people will be vaccinated, just like any other people in South Africa. That system will be responding to that. Uh, we are in this country, we are part of this country, we will be working with national, but Eastern Cape, just like any other province, uh, will be ready and will be capable uh, to roll out the vaccination at a point when the country is doing it. So, uh, I repeat it, you can go anywhere in the world, in your the world, uh, first world uh, uh, economies. Uh, this has been a challenge, this has been an issue. 
So it's not just a, a, an issue of a, an isolated a, a province, etc. But I can tell you, we will be ready. We will be able to vaccinate. You can't find a situation where people of Eastern Cape won't be vaccinated. Immediately that arrives. Um, the frontline workers of this province will be vaccinated at the same time with others, uh, as long as uh, that uh, the vaccine will be available and will be allowed to be rolled out in, in the province. The, the question of uh, uh, skeptics, uh, that, that's a worrying. I think that's a point that we're addressing, that people who are peddling lies, uh, people who are creating this uh, perpetual uncertainty, uh, it's, it's worrying. It's something that we're really condemning in, 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 in strongest possible terms. Uh, we know that, even in the past, that would have been an experience for anyone who is not sure. And a lot of things are said out there, but we are appealing to our people that at a point uh, this uh, vaccine is available, our people must rate it themselves. Take responsibility about your life. Stop listening to all other people who are saying things uh, uh, out there. Uh, the same people will go and vaccinate themselves see and uh, get the vaccine. So uh, we want to appeal to our people that government is doing it slowly but surely. We definitely want to do what is right for our people. We are not going to act under pressure because uh, it is being done in the US, it is being done in, 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 in London. We must adapt it to our material condition. It must respond to the needs uh, of our people. That's why uh, government nationally is actually working uh, on, and that's what the minister has explained to all South Africans, let's support that uh, process, let's support that initiative and make sure that government uh, does uh, the right thing. Uh, the issue of uh, uh, initiation, we were never put under any pressure uh, as government, I must indicate. We've been working together with our stakeholders on this issue of COVID-19 from the day one. Uh, we couldn't have uh, initiation uh, in June. Uh, our people understood it, uh, that this is a, a challenge. At a point when we were agreeing, our numbers were actually relatively low. Uh, we only experienced the second wave when we have almost agreed on this. Uh, that's why we have said, let's do it in a risk-adjusted approach. Where you have got high numbers, don't take chances. That's why we couldn't agree on Nelson Mandela and Sarah Batman because this is where uh, this actually resurgence was actually showing its uh, ugly head. Yes, it actually spread across the province in the process. That's why at a point when we saw it now, it, that it is almost all over, then we said, let's stop it. Because it's about protecting lives, it's about limiting any risk that uh, these young people can be exposed to. If in June we will have high numbers, there can't be initiation process, and everyone understood that. But if numbers will be low in June, there will be an initiation process. We have stopped it now uh, because we have seen uh, this actually uh, surge. We are almost peaking uh, as a province, and uh, now we are on the decline. We would wish, would wish to see this uh, being sustained as we have been seeing that it has been sustained for almost over a week or two. Uh, moving forward, we hope that uh, that kind of uh, plateauing is what we are going to be observing, and that leveling of the curve is what is going to be the order of the day uh, in our province. Uh, in April, uh, uh, because uh, National uh, Coronavirus Command Council meet regularly, reviews, regulations, takes decisions in the best interest uh, of our people. Yes, there were complaints, but in the province we had almost more than 44,000 boys who were ready to go for the circumcision. That couldn't go in June. Uh, that's why we felt like it's important that we look at that issue under a very risk-adjusted uh, approach. Uh, on the other question that uh, Dr. Mengasha was uh, explaining, uh, as I conclude, Kulende comorbidities. We are Kumbulba Le Province too. It's one of those labor-sending provinces, especially in the mining uh, 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 sector. Part of the challenge that we have been experiencing out of this virus has been the each challenges of uh, the respiratory challenges, uh, difficulties of our people. What we have been working on, uh, you understand all of you, what these uh, from the apestos and other things that our people have been exposed to. So the bulk of people in the country who were exposed to these the respiratory uh, the risk uh, uh, diseases, even in the mining sector, are people from this province. So 
we should really not be surprised when we see uh, these issues. But what we are trying to do, see, I asked Babandu Baya Kolelwa, Kufuteni, Babandu Baya Kolelwa, Kujemu Tokebe Sicho, Njalon Jalo, continue steaming. It's important uh, to steam. We have seen it, uh, many people saying it. But you must be able to be in the hospital, especially if you know that you have got comorbidity, so that we can help you and assist you monitor uh, your cells, monitor your oxygen uh, on a regular basis. Because if you have a lot of oxygen, you have oxygen, you have a lot of oxygen, because oxygen is gone. So we are looking at all those kind of uh, the, the, the challenges and the, uh, the permutations. So we really want to appeal to our people. That's why we have said in Nelson Mandela, We've got a big field hospital that can accommodate uh, about 1,500 uh, people, which had a capacity when we were conceptualizing it of almost 3,000. And we've said, people, go and uh, admit yourself. Uh, it is in quarantine. At the same time, it is in isolation. So if you have tested, tested positive, you can go there and uh, admit yourself so that you take your isolation period there. If you have tested, you are waiting for your results, and you are quarantining, you don't have a space to quarantine, you can still go there. We will be able to allow you to do so. So this is what we have done in almost every the hospital. Yes, of course, when our numbers were going, because uh, even our development in the province is skewed more on the urban and metro side. As you move, yes, we do have beds. As you move inland and in the rural setup of the province, we do have beds, and we have since... Uh, uh, moved from the f um, f uh, first wave where we took decisions that we're not going to build uh, uh, field hospitals in abstract. We are going to look for legacy uh, uh, programs for this COVID. We're going to facelift and rework the old dilapidating infrastructure in our hospital. And this is what we've done. We have now many other beds that are coming up. If you go to your spare two, over and above the 500 million project hospital that we're doing that will be ready before uh, June this year, we have also built additional beds which were in response to this. We have done almost beds in every hospital across the province. Where you go, you will find that in the last uh, six, seven months, we have built number of beds in the province to respond to this issue of COVID and uh, created the capacity of your high care as well as your ICU beds that have been actually not available uh, in that other part of the province. So we have done our part and we continue to do our work and uh, we are on the ground. Uh, we are alert. We continue taking advices, guidance, support. We appreciate that. Uh, where people see things, let them report. We are able to respond to that. We are just trying to ensure that our government is agile uh, and our agility is going to help us to really tackle and uh, deal with these issues decisively. Uh, we are done by our own. Sure, sure. Thank you, Premier. I think the, the last request we have is from the SABC and I'm requesting that you, you, you give them a classified... Aye. Uh, Aye. Aye. <laughs> Thank you very much, guys. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, the, the fact about uh, the important level three, by young? active cases in the last uh, two months or so. Sasebenza uh, after six appeal, we go average of three thousand, two thousand a day infections, uh, daily infections. Sasebenza zi ma ukutu nse ndogo kuba si tumeli teams zetu tu pa yebantu ni kopa is a tumeli van kwa test wa bonga band massive testing that was happening and no longer the issue of uh, uh, testing the significant contacts. Uh, no longer an issue of about uh, index, but just generally testing about uh, Bakut. 
So lama nani atotyo ke kumsebe nzebe suwens. Kusikobe kasi atesta pati wabona manani ke. Eh, Ayesha isa ingoma ke londo kakulu kubangoku. Eh, ubu ya stelegi sa namanya mapono. Eh, I active cases zetu. Eh, zi, zinga panzi kwi active cases za se eh, free state, za se limpompo, za se northwest. Eh, they are at 6,000 and above. Ezi eh, nyege zikulu. Ezi eh, tuziyesha. Because i plan e besi ibegile. Iye ya singeta kakulu uku kense kisiba siya zama uku uchaw chaw la lomli lo wetop. Lomtu indiwe beti. Jeng basi ukatu isa. I beti sinazwe zbelele. Kwa ya si zongezi le i beti. Ezi nabu nabu kaka kaka obu funeka abu kungeti sa abu bafuna uku ngeti suange oxygen jalonja. Ama nani jeng ba besi wataza. Sinendo epa more than 2,000 ye beti ezi koyo. As in an abound to Chris Bedley, they said. So, see, Zamugut Abandwin, Band Babes is Bedley. But the thing about it, Bed is a pale like we private hospital. I would take to good debate is a pale like Eastern Cape, Sabatella Abandu, Nalendo Yokin, the Gogba is Bedley, a private hospital. Okay, to Lalemo to in a private hospital, Lenda on Wupe, Gemma Kiwan, it's a problem. So, Abandu Mababega with Bedley Lezabo is the Cobos of Luisa and Alencho Longwane. Ezi koyo, zikona na paya, seza mauke, that's why se siti na lapa, so ngeza no kriha gengu. Aba ninti, ezi belde luke, nse kisiba, akuzu bako spede le kwa sina kriha, njalonja. Si kangela manesi, aneza kono, nezi kobo, ezi fanele kleyo, zo snetisa, ama nesa ngabi ili angongo pele. Jengo kwa si sazi, si bona imeko, kwa kwa senza, unako nako, ukuke nse kisiba, si awazi uku kaulela na nalondo. Ipeti, zikona, kwa ya si azongeza, zikona nesi zongeza yungu, ezi besi sebenza kuzo from first phase, ku public works, e sebe nza ngazo, zi reti, zi ya nikeze. E, kodwa kuya uyazi, ndoko kuba u puti so lueli pondo, kakate, kakate, belu loko lu kekelela ez dolopi. So, i beti, zisa uba koni nga kumbi kwe ez dolopi zinkuru, e, nez bedlen. E, mkambi ta usi ya kwe zinye inda, pansu kote nezele, ufuke ez beti, unga zbo, nika kuhu, kodwa sinazo, i beti, kwa kwe provinsi yonki, inda ifama wa siya ichoka kengu, i management, ifama na netebe sa kula kakulu, ukuba singa mtata na umtu, E Alfred Nzo, simse O.R. Tam. Singa mtata na umtu e Christiani, e, simse e Amaton. Apu kukokona ipeti. Zonge ezo peti. Zez gakulmente. Zi peti ze province. Aizo zenda wetile. So, ingele si sebenza kaya kukuza mucho. Ngezo ndo ezo nuku kaulela na nezo ngagi. Ukutu nsegi si doko kuba siya itudula. Siya alwana lencho longo anekanga ngogo siya ingipiz. Koto akondo yo kite indo kukuba kunandwe ukosulela na kwa bandu na lencho longo anekanga. Ba yeke abandu uku wamba yonge indawo, besa sulalana, kalencho longwane. Ubaba ya kubeka, sa ukubeka, sibona manana nyuka, kakuu. E, izi fo nge izi fo, ezi koyo, hapa e provinsi. Zizu ezi neka, lelu el kulu, ukubona kali sama nana pezulu, ukupopa kwa bandu. Abandu betuwa ba ninti, jengwa kukusazi, bafuneka kufutu, kiwe hapa, bayo sebenza kui mines, e, babe neza zi fo, zezi fo, manendo ndoni, zezi nye zezi ndo. Enye yezi deka uleza, ule COVID, kukuminga bandu. Ia kaulezi sa kwa mewe njenga le. So, zesi zidoke, ekufuneka bandu nongo bezibonile, bezikapele. Tasu hae si babongoza, abandu basi Eastern Cape. Magungo sule lwa bandu, kubasifuni bandu wabaza honga nyangiki. Kubabene zifo, nge zifo. Kajikusi lukeha hapa, indoko kuba, inga gumbi kawune komopiti, tizbembi, nizbende atu, uwe etu. Ama tuba ako kawutewa tkapazaleka, makulu kakulu ba, unga nikeze. Abandu, neti umda zivenga mnanda, akuseko onde yekutuwa ngwa indi nefiva. Ubu ziva uno mkutlana, vuka uwa mbupeke spedle, utele utestwa spedle, ujekuba uno mkutlana. Ayiko indeti lono mkutlana ngowe COVID, lono mkutlana asu ngowe COVID, ayiko lono. So masikwe niseki isi njiba wonge umtu, i capacity yeti o testa bandu, i kona si ayazi ila voretri zetu zie zaeza kenisu wanga gumbi, zia wenza lomse wenzi lono. So abandu baguti, mabai ya mkelele ni dogoba, netu zivunga mnanda, kauleza uyo testa. So that siku wazo kukungeti isa ngoku kawle zokulu, unga tanga wafuna ni ambulance. Uzi zela na ngoku wako, siku niginda hawa, siku supporte, siku chongu, ba yei pindu wafuna ni ubeka niti kukungeti isa ngayo. So siya bakitayla kakulu kabandu wakuti nongo ba sebe nze nati, ba sengeti seke kakulu ke kwezi ndo ezi njanga yeso. Ngozi. Especially the 
Into ANZ, the second wave. As yes, I born at Quebec, no go, yes, yes, and the Uba no go, Sibeno, no Kalaba, Indoba, Aband, especially on the Bacha, Banalen, who go to a year risk perception, Kuba Kutwing level one, Abandu Bakumba High, I circle in Aki, actually, you into AS for sale of Niele were COVID second wave. Always been is that good because I wonder about Nins in Google game. Baby say university, baby school wini, be amba is goal. Now COVID in Gendela Esulangayo, Abandu Abasabacha, Ababuniga Simpauzo, Babaya Kula Bona, Bahamba, Be Kubeka Ega Benga Ziva in Pau. Go to a long detail to Babangan, Bamanga Sula, Bamanga Aband. But now, if you have a car, you can go to the hospital. 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 You can go to Umdu ufika nogo se 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 pelelo angamand anga kuazu kubeke anga kuazu ba magabe na lo ini kalelo lo ba ezi dosi na zungu zungu nega ukushinge kash ayenza uba si fosi chige ukumana maiza atile angabile for covid ayenza guti nga pekele nga pambi ukumana oxygen pizu ayenza uba umdu angabi nogo ang 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 London au fika leti kuyasu au so in this kakhulu kakhulu njengo premier sicho yintoba ma city especially apa batsha ma siya ezipatini siya nakwezi rave sibeka ebuchengeni abazali nomakhulu emakhaya thina njengabatsha asibonakaliso uba sinengxaki kanye ndoba ke abanangxaki yoba abaphelela ezibhedlela so yiyo ndibalekile kakhulu ke lento lo nxa sicca sizama noko ukukhusela abantu abadala Yeah, I got a Can you can you see that? Can you hear him? Yeah. Mm-hmm.